I know some of you guys are probably be tired from camp, but if I could just ask you all to stand, we're going to open the service in prayer before worship. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you just come in this place and begin to bless this house, oh God. Lord, we just want your anointing to fill this house today, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to forgive us, oh Lord, of our sins. God, we want to be clean when we come into your, your presence, oh God. Lord, we just ask you to cleanse our minds and our hearts, oh God. God, now we're going to begin to thank you for that cleansing, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord, for touching me, oh God. I thank you for giving, for giving me an opportunity to be in this place today, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord. God, now begin to bless him. Oh, oh, begin to lift up your hands and your voices and your, oh God, and give it all to him this morning. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Worship with us today. If you were at camp, go ahead, just move on. Let's get excited like we did at camp. Let's just begin to worship the King of Kings right now. Boy. I was bound, couldn't find the solid ground. I was blind, couldn't see how you called me royalty. But in just three days you came and rescued.
Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful to be a child of the King? Oh, yes. Can we just lift our hands and begin to praise him? Aren't you thankful that he loves us so much? Oh, hallelujah. If you'd like prayer today, go ahead and step up here. Pastor and the team can pray for you. If you need healing, if you have a need this morning, thank you, Jesus.
You should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, there's a spirit building all over me. Well, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost. Too. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, felt the spirit moving all over me. Well, you should have been there. and you said yes so this water represents the blood of Jesus who was the perfect sacrifice to pay the price for your sins mine too every one of us needs to be baptized in Jesus name praise the Lord so Jesus. 
just came back from camp. You may be seated. Um, we had a good time, didn't we? Yeah. Our church was very involved in camp. I just want to give a few shout outs to thank you and so you can give them a hand clap. The sound at camp this year, which has been several years now, was our sound guy. Cody Alexandra, and then um, he works with Austin and Luke on sound. They did all the sound for Cam. They did a great job. Let's give them a hand. I was proud of them. And then our camp drummer was our own Andrew Bowen. Let's give him a hand. He did a great job. Our praise team did Thursday night. Um, give them a hand. They did a wonderful job. Um, and then there was a youth praise team, which Andrew was over. And um, to help him on that was Nika on the piano. And then Promise um, helped him sing as well. So let's give them a hand. Our kids jam leader, um, Keisha, she taught lessons. She did. She was over crafts. She did a lot of stuff back there. I wasn't back there, but she was busy the whole week with all of that. So she did. She was really involved with the kids. So give her a hand, our own Keisha. Woo! Um, Pastor did the Holy Ghost celebration every night. And he did a great job. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> and we were also over a first impression team. So we did all the first impression. We did all the greeting, all the welcoming, all that. So um, give us a hand. <laughs> give him a hand. <laughs> and then Caleb, there were two counselors, like in one of the dorms. I don't know there's different counselors, like where the boys slept. There were lots of counselors that came with the church. But he was in there helping keep all the young boys in, in line. I'm sure that wasn't an easy job. So give our Caleb, our very own Caleb, a hand. He's 18 now, so he was involved in all that. So we were a big, we have, there's a picture of us on our app at camp. I think there was, how many was in the picture? It was a lot of us. And then the next day, like 10 more came, I know. We didn't get a picture with them. But we had a great time. And while we were there... We had um, Sister Laura 
received the Holy Ghost. And um, Jack received the Holy Ghost. And um, last week, Kevin was baptized. So we're going to give those certificates out in a little bit. Um, I don't see Lord. She's helping Gemma. And Gemma was baptized today, as you all saw. Praise the Lord. The angels are rejoicing, aren't they, as well as we are. Um, so next week is our back-to-school service. Um, so that will be back to school. We'll have a service, special service back to school. Our Sunday school directors are over that. Brother Michael is teaching that. Um, he's our Sunday school director. And then we're also afterwards, we'll have a special, everything special kid stuff. After, But we, as you all know, we all come still and we enjoy the kid stuff, right? It's a fun time. And then after service, we're having games, water games, right? We're doing all the water stuff that we do every year um, after that. So make sure you come and bring all the kids that you can find near you that would like to come and enjoy back to school. We also give back to school supplies, so you, you want to not miss that. Let's see. Um, I think that was everything. Yeah, that's all. Back to school bash. Um, and then we've kind of did it different today. We sent the classes on back, but let's go ahead and get our offering ready. And while we do that, I see Laura's in the room. Laura has entered the room. <laughs> Um, she may not be staying. So let's go ahead and do Kevin. Kevin, we're gonna, if you don't mind, to come up and get your baptismal certificate. He was baptized in the name of Jesus last Sunday. And we're excited about that. We have our camera, yeah, person. <laughs> we're excited about that. smile in front of everybody, right? Nothing. <laughs> All right. And we'll give theirs later. Okay. Thanks. To have you all here today, it's good to have um, Laura's husband. It's so nice. I was like, I finally get to meet him. I've heard him about him over and over. Nice to meet you. And then um, Laura's mom and dad. So um, stepmom and, and dad, so good to have you here. We're honored and privileged to have you here with us today. Lord bless you. Praise God. Isn't God good to us? So much to thank the Lord for today. Praise God. I just don't even hardly know where to go. I, I'm just, wow. So many good things. I'm excited. I, I'm so proud of Blackwell, I have to say. I'm proud of Blackwell. It, always, uh, not only do we have uh, so many people involved at camp uh, that come from here, uh, we, there are, there is just a multitude of people who have, who have uh, been in this ministry that are there, uh, pastors and, and assistant pastors and, and people throughout the congregations and things like that. We've had, we touched a lot of lives out of this little corner that people said, couldn't do anything. You'd never, never grow a church there. You don't even have enough uh, parking. Is what was once said to me. Yeah, well, the Lord showed them, didn't He? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. When, when everybody said, uh, "Boy, I don't know. You don't have enough money to build that building." Uh, God showed them, didn't He? Because Lord, not only did He build the building, He He built it. Uh, all paid for and it took a lot of hard work and it took a lot of time and we got it done praise the Lord so good so thankful we've been enriched we have been enriched we want to go to the first chapter of first Corinthians first chapter of first Corinthians and I, I'm, I'm going to kind of read through some and uh we're going to just kind of glean over the top highlights of some things. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I thank my God, verse 4, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by Him. In all utterance and in all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift you're not left behind no. 
waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that he may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. Anybody say amen to that? Father, would you bless your people today? Increase us, encourage us, enrich us even further. We pray the power of the Holy Ghost will be upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. The uniqueness of the Corinthian church is that it is a very Greek city. It's Roman influence now as well. Corinth is the name of the city. And, and we have the first book and the second book. It's just a matter of different letters written to Corinthians. And each time you find that Paul is addressing a letter that's been sent to him. Or possibly uh, in, in this reading, you'll find that he had someone come to him and said, Hey, we, we've got some issues back home that we need to address. We need you to address. He wasn't just the guy across the street that it was slander for him to say, for somebody to go to him. He was the authority. He was the apostle. He was the one who helped establish the church. It was, it was, there were people there from, on the day of Pentecost that received the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it wasn't like they weren't aware of what was going on. But when Paul comes along and begins to preach to them, there becomes stability. There becomes growth. There becomes more and more. Well, how does that apply to us? Well, there's a lot of stuff about Jesus around. There's a lot of people who believe in Jesus. But it takes a preacher. It takes, it takes the Bible. It takes study. It takes fellowship. It takes encouragement to dig out all the good stuff that's involved in it. And once you get some of that, you begin all of a sudden go, whoa, wait a minute. This is, this is greater than I ever thought. This is deeper than I ever thought. This is intense. This is incredible. We use the word awesome because it's all inspiring. It's incredible. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is God breathed on us. It is God's word is breathed on us. And I'll tell you when God's anointing, which is the same thing as being breathed upon, comes into your life, into your home, into your family, into your heart, all of a sudden you're saying, God's awesome. This guy is fabulous. Praise the Lord. We don't always have the right words to say. We don't always have even words to find. We're, we're kind of lost for it. And the reason why is because God is more vast than our minds could ever understand. Ever understand. When you've been in it as long as I've been in it, and as long as, as uh, Sister Jones back there has been in it, or Sister Betty's been in it, those Sister Diana's been in it since she was born. Sister Robin, yeah, you're about four, wasn't you? Two. Uh, so as long as she's been talking, praise the Lord. So some of these have been around the apostolic way for a long time. And there's been a lot of preaching. There's been a lot of reading the Bible year after year. There have been a lot of Sunday school classes and even teaching Sunday school classes. And helping the hurt and the, the troubled and inspiration from God. But I can tell you that every day something new comes along. Not, it's not a new doctrine. It's a God that just reveals himself just a little more. Just a little more peace, a little more encouragement, a little more help, a little more blessing. Come God, I'm so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm enriched today. To enrich something, they take, uh, they take wheat and they grind it all up and then they mill it even farther and then bring it down to that powdered substance that we have. But they, that's not just all that they do to it. Sometimes they enrich it with some vitamins and things like that so that uh, some of the things that we as 
humans might not be able to get enough of our vitamins from our normal diet. They enrich our flour, those things, so that we have more. They enrich our water in the water bottles with minerals. Why? Because it's supposed to enhance the taste. So we'll go with that. But when it comes to God, it's not artificial. It's not fake. It's not just to make it taste good. It's not so you can take the bitter pill of life. It's because when he enriches you, you become encouraged, blessed, overwhelmed, increased, helped. There's no one like our God. There's no one like our God. Praise the Lord. Testimonies around the room of how God has enriched your life. How God has helped you. How God has increased you. How God has come on the scene in the, in the nick of time. Financial situations that were rectified by the hand of God. Miracle after miracle. Healing after healing. Just ask. We can share. Happy to tell of the goodness of God. And his mercy that is everlasting. Yes, I serve him because he's faithful. It says, God is faithful. Praise the Lord. How can I not serve God when he's so faithful to me? When I know I messed up, when I know I fall, I know he's right there. There to pick me up. Dust me off. Very rarely do you hear him say, I told you so. But most often he'll tell me, you can do it. Don't give up now. You keep going. You can make it all the way. His word comes alive to me and reminds me of his goodness and his mercy. There's no one like our God. See, in verse 5, well, it talks about verse 4, the grace of God. Grace of God. It's powerful what grace does. Uh, grace seems to be that get out of jail card, that, that thing that everybody kind of pulls out there and says, uh, I'm good, I've got the grace of God. I'm good, I've got the grace of God. But what really grace is, is when, when God has done all that he has done for us, he died on the cross. First of all, he recognized our need. A lot of times, we'd do more if we knew what the need really was. We ask, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. But yet, we're not doing so great. Septic tank's leaking. Tire's not running true anymore. My, 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 my dog is not well. My wife is sick. My kids got holes in their shoes. There's all kinds of things, excuses you can come up with. And you can, oh, I'm doing great. Where God can see beyond all your excuses. God can see through all your veneers. He can see your heart. He can see your need. One writer said he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. He looked beyond all the things that I put up. I put up my banner of I'm blessed. I put up my banners of I'm strong. I put up my banners that say, hey, I'm living for Jesus. But in my heart, I'm broken. I'm struggling. He can see right through it all. He can see me. He can see you. He knows what you need. He knows it before you even ask. He knows when your heart is broken. He knows when your, your wallet is empty. He knows when your spirit is just dry. It just feels like Arizona in 2023. It's just dry. Well, but as the song that the new team or this music team sings, and says, let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. When it rains, you know, it comes down and it just fills the pools and fills the crevices and it, and it works into the ground and it runs across the surface. And anybody standing out of it, it 
fills it and it comes down. And not very long before your, your layers are, are, it's gone all the way through your layers. Just experienced it the other day while doing some work. I, I, just one layer after another. My hat got all wet and finally got sop and wet. And finally my, my overcoat and then inside of my shirt and then on into my underclothes. And everything even down to my socks and shoes were completely just drenched. And that can be pretty miserable, can't it? But not when you're dry. Not when you've been hot. And the rain comes down and it cools everything off. And all of a sudden you're just drenched. When you've been waiting. You know, they always depict it in the movies where they've been in a drought. And they hear the thunder and they go outside and it starts sprinkling. And all of a sudden they're dancing around in the rain and all that. Because the rain came then. Praise the Lord. It never affected Gene Kelly as he danced in the rain. Because he was in love. Life was good. When you're in the presence of God and he begins to move. And it begins to just get into the cracks and the crevices and the pulls up and it goes into the situation, goes across the surface it begins to drench every layer of your life. Everything that you are struggling with, everything that is so dry and so bound and so, so completely in wanting our God can come through the layers and into your heart and into your situation and enrich Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing like the enriching power of the Most High God. He said, enriched by Him in all knowledge and in all under utterance. You guys haven't been left behind. I've been sharing with you and you're caught right up. And he said, Or you can quit playing with your Brazilian friends and pay attention. <laughs> I'm kidding you, Mike. Uh, bless his heart. He's got all kinds of people. He, he, he does the internet. And he's got people all over the world watching this thing. Brazilians. Awesome. And all utterance and all knowledge, even as a testimony of God of Christ was confirmed in you. That testimony is death, burial, and resurrection. Everybody dies, right? Everybody gets buried, but not everybody resurrects. That was the big deal. They didn't care if they killed Christ. They didn't care if it, whoever buried him. They didn't care. You, you two guys, you can just take his body. We don't care. He's dead. You can just take him wherever. That didn't matter. But when he raised from the dead, now that became a problem. That became a very big problem, and that problem became our testimony. Because we are blessed with the blood of Jesus on our lives, and we are resurrected with him. So that ye, become, ye come behind to no gift. I'm sorry. So that ye come behind in no gift. You, you guys are just, you're not behind. You're, right, you're caught up. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall also confirm you unto the end. Now he's confirmed the testimony in your life. His testimony in your life. But he's going to confirm you. You are going to go from this world to the next world. You're going to walk in the spirit. Not in your flesh only. We, we have this this flesh, but one of these days we'll lay it down. It'll become dust again. It'll all be over that. But that that spirit, that soul within you, will live eternally, and that's what's important. God is wanting to confirm that you may be blameless in that day, the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter eight, verse three. Romans is a beautiful book. It takes a little bit of work and a whole lot of Holy Ghost, but it is such a blessing to us. 
In verse 1 it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. You guys, you guys keep on working. God has blessed you and you don't have to, you don't have to bear all the burden of your past. Because when you're baptized, all your past is washed away. All the sin of the past is gone. Jim, a very young, a very young lady, uh, like 10 years old, I believe, baptized in Jesus' name. Her sins are washed away. Well, what's a 10-year-old done? Not a whole lot. But the fact is, is every one of us is born in sin. Now, come around 14, I had a longer list. Some of you sitting in here today uh, could tell you I got baptized. I had a list that I wouldn't even want nobody to read. But God knew, and it didn't stop him from saving you, from forgiving you, and being merciful to you and showing his grace in your, his grace in your life. 4, verse 3. For what the law could not do, the law was uh, Moses' law, it was, the, it was what was, it's what God's plan for, for the Jewish people before Jesus come into their lives. In that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So Jesus came and he paid the price. He paid the price that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The only way the law, the law had a righteousness, the only way that was going to be fulfilled was through Jesus' death and the blood payment. Who shall not after walk, who walk not after the, the flesh, but after the spirit. You righteous? You're walking in the in the spirit, walking in the spirit denies the flesh. It pushes the flesh aside. It follows after God. It's enriched by spirit. You've got spirit. You're walking life in joy and in peace. And those are the fruit of the spirit, right? You've got joy. You've got peace. You've got love. You've got long suffering. You've got mercy, goodness. All those lists, it's the, it's, it's the gift. No, not the gift. The, the fruit of the Spirit. It's in your life. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and peace. I'm enriched with the Holy Ghost. Why? A couple of reasons. Number one, I need the Holy Ghost to be alive like Jesus was alive in resurrection. I, I, I died out on an altar in repentance. I'm baptized or buried in Jesus' name. And I rise again to new birth with the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost brings me all these wonderful things. And one of those things is life and peace. Life and peace. There's nothing more peaceful than a rain coming down on a metal roof, right? And there's nothing more peaceful than God's enriching coming across this old hard head of mine. When the blood, when the love, pardon me, the love of God comes and just increases me and encourages me and helps me with, when I begin to see things like he sees them, I, I just, I'm enriched, I'm encouraged, I'm helped. Would you stand with me today? Now I could, I could recommend a lot of things to you. One thing I'd recommend that peanut brittle out there, it's, it's good. I'd recommend going to a camp meeting. It's great. I'd recommend, uh, I'd recommend that you become a friend to Brother Jack Pinatas. Because there's just none other. 
I'd recommend you go fishing with Steve Bo- uh, Brewer. Because he's just, he's just good at it. And I'd recommend the Holy Ghost to anybody in this room. Everybody in this room. Everybody watching. The Holy Ghost is life and peace. I encourage you to raise your hand with me right now and just reach out for God. Thank you, Lord. I've struggled in this world with lots of things, but when I look to you and I finally say, oh God, I just need some help here, I find that you come along with that wonderful love of yours and it just brings me peace. It brings me help. It brings me hope. You too, my friend, can have that today if you just... Just reach up that hand a little farther and say, oh, God, I want it more. I want it all that you've got for me. I need of you, oh, God. I'm so hungry in my soul for something. This world has not satisfied me. I may have had the cars. I may have had the job. I may have had the, the life. But I haven't had you. I may have been able to sing the song. I may have been able to play the game. I may have been able to dance the dance, but I did not have you. Oh, I pray that you will seek him because he is the giver of life, the giver of hope, the giver of love, real love. I invite you to step out today and make a commitment to Jesus and serve him. Walk out of there, out of your despair, work out of your trouble today and say, Jesus, I need some help. I invite you to step out of your pew and say, I've served you for years, but I still need you today. And I invite you to come to, and, and encourage each other. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, We're just enriched. been given the good stuff been given the good stuff hallelujah 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 oh the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus if you want the Holy Ghost raise your hands by faith and say God it's what I want it's what I need talking about pastor I want to hear about more about it preacher you come make your way up here I'll show you what God can do in your life won't be just all talk I'll show you the love of God
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful week. Praise the Lord. We're going to start the brand new one. We've got us a great week ahead of us. Praise the Lord. At Blackwell, we offer home Bible studies, conversation, encouragement. We invite you back Wednesday at 7 o'clock for, for worship together and, and study. Uh, and then uh, again on Sundays at 11, we're looking... Lord's coming back. We've got to be ready. I hope that you'll, you'll join in with us as we look for the Lord and as we reach the lost. God bless you. You're all dismissed in Jesus' name.